This episode is brought to you by Lifetech's Jim Wayland. Welcome back podcast listeners. Welcome to Women of Wayland podcast. Join us on a journey through the vibrant community of Wayland as we spotlight the extraordinary stories of women right next door. From entrepreneurs to activists, caregivers to creators, each episode of Women of Wayland brings you closer to the remarkable women shaping our town's fabric. In this episode of Women of Wayland podcast, we sit down with Sarah Patel. Sarah's journey with cannabis began in her teens, but it wasn't until after becoming a mother that she truly appreciated its transformative effects. She recalls feeling judged and misunderstood, but when she reintroduced cannabis into her life after giving birth, everything changed. Suddenly, Sarah found relief from anxiety, quieted negative thoughts, and became more present and focused, all while caring for her daughter. It was a revelation. Cannabis wasn't about stereotypes or stigma. It was about feeling like her best self. With this newfound clarity, Sarah set out to share this experience with others. She envisioned Kelia as more than just a beverage. It's a conduit for change. Whether sipped throughout the day or enjoyed as a mocktail with friends, Kelia aims to redefine the cannabis experience. Sarah's mission is clear to change the conversation around cannabis and empower others to embrace its benefits openly and without shame. So join us as we dive into Sarah's journey and discover how Kelia is leading the charge in transforming the world of cannabis one sip at a time. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. I really want to get into the story, but before doing that, I want to know what got you to Wayland? Um, school system and <laughs> the usual, the usual. <laughs> and, um, I, you know, grew up in Newton or not a big city, but it's a city. And I really liked the thought of my daughter growing up in a community rather than a city. And okay. so I really wanted that for her. It is so exciting to have you here with an exciting product. Before I jump into the product side, I really want to know a little bit about yourself and what motivated you to launch this special product. Yeah. So I had um, have a cannabis beverage out and um, called Kelia. And I had been a cannabis user for, you know, since my teenage years. And truthfully, I used quite regularly. It, it was daily for me. And it was something that, you know, especially as a teenager, I used it a lot as for like the euphoric effect. It calmed me. It, you know, made me, helped me relax a lot. And, you know, through college and in my 20s, I, you know, still continued use. When I met my now husband and when we tried to get pregnant and while I was pregnant, while I was breastfeeding, I did not use any cannabis products. And I didn't realize that anxiety was kind of sneaking up on me. Oh, yeah. You does. know, especially like no one really likes to talk about like postpartum depression, right. postpartum anxiety. And it's so common. It is. Um, and when I finished breastfeeding my daughter, I took an edible and I remember being on a walk with her. And um, we were just walking. And I was just like feeling nice. And I realized my anxiety went away. That voice in my head that was mean to me, <laughs> basically like you, you know, aren't smart enough or pretty enough or whatever. It started to really quiet. And I started to feel like I was connecting back to the person that I had been when I was growing up, like more uh, confident, um, more relaxed. And I didn't realize at that time that, you know, anxiety had crept up on me and it was kind of eye-opening. When I got home, it was something truly that I wanted to bottle for other women, especially because it's, you know, cannabis is something that as someone who used it for years, you get a lot of negative stereotypes put on you, you, you know, people maybe don't think you're motivated or they don't think that you are intelligent or 
that you're lazy, like all of these like quote unquote stoner Mm -hmm. attributes they put on you just because you use cannabis. And I'm like, I want to stop that you know, let's let's make a new conversation around cannabis and let's include more women. As moms or even as a single empty nester or as a woman who's just like in her 20s, 30s, 40s, name it, we're always surrounded by judgments. Mm-hmm. Judgment of this, that, how we look, how we, what we're eating, drinking, how we're keeping our families. There's a lot of pressure on women. Mm. overall mm. and then with the system that we live in uh, no matter how equal your partner is you're still doing a lot yes you you are like you know i have felt the stigma attached to cannabis a lot more than the alcohol so coming to point which takes me time <laughs> is yeah. uh, i want you to tell me that moment in your life when you were a user and that people like said something to hurt you was it tough so a i will say just point blank cannabis makes me a better mom i am not scared to say that um it's relaxing i can get on the same level as my daughter i can be more creative as a mother i can be more present as a mother so i will say that first and foremost not a lot gets to me when it comes to cannabis but i do have a recollection of um, I was dating this guy and he used cannabis with me. I mean, it, we both smoked, but mostly it was just, uh, you know, like in his family, it wasn't really something that was smiled upon. And um, I remember his brother said something to me, but he said it in a way like I was part of a Cheech and Chong movie, you know, like Oh, you know, oh, you're really going to do that, Sarah, or like whatever. Mm-hmm. And I remember just wanting to be like, would you speak to your brother that way? Mm. Probably not. Yeah, just because you know, just yeah, because I'm a woman, woman and I'm doing it, and I'm honestly, women are sort of easy targets, mm. um, especially if you know, I am someone who will hear that and be like, <laughs> because you know, just kind of like laugh it off and maybe not stick up for myself. Um, and I, that, it didn't, now I was able to walk away from that being like, what a jackass, but like, it's not something that, that hurt me, but it is something that I remember. It was a little bit like, how dare you judge me on this? And like, and so, but Hmm. you know, now that it's like legal and coming out with the beverage, I'm just sort of like, to anyone who judged me, like keep yeah, doing here it you go. yeah keep doing it like I, I there's now I I understand that I I don't think I have a target on my back right but I think that I'm op- definitely opening myself and frankly what scares me is I'm opening my daughter up mm-hmm. to judgment and that's something that I've definitely been thinking more about you know are there moms that are going to be like you know, maybe Anna isn't the best play date to have. Mm, you I, know? Think I, I, I can imagine that. It's scary because you scary. don't want to no. do anything yeah. that um, gets in your any of your children's way of being the best them and most successful them that they can be. And yeah, that scares me a little bit. That like maybe I'm just sort of hoping that for the most part, you know, if you want to judge me, judge me. Um, don't judge my daughter. She didn't make up, you know, she didn't decide that I should do this. I did. Frankly, if it makes me a better person and it's not hurting anyone. Yeah. Um, if someone judges me, like so be it. I, I'm I still going to be a better me. That woman. You I know? like it. It you'll you know there will always be people who are going to judge me or think differently of me when they find out that I do what I do or right. that I I have what I have and whatever. But no, Sarah, this is beautiful because you have thought about this from all directions. I can see that. Yes, as a woman, as a host, there would be people who might think that you know 
you know it's uh, because because i know that valen has has had the history of saying no to a dispensary yes, yeah, it does. Bio, you know, <laughs> know that i so do when know I was, that when i was trying to interview you <laughs> and i have i have this habit no matter where our women come from mm-hmm. the incredible journeys the bravery they show Mm-hmm. is why women of valen stands yeah. it's what women of valen stands for yeah when you decided it will be a cannabis beverage who was the first person you broke this news to and <laughs> i'm assuming it would be mr patel it was mr patel it was my husband um i i actually got home from that walk and i i mean like it was all that i could think about I got home and I'm like I know what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. I know what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to make a cannabis beverage. And he looked at me and smiled and said, "No." <laughs> and I'm like, "No, no, no. I yes. I this is what I'm supposed to do." And I'm like, "Think about it." And I'm trying to sell him and he's like, "Sarah, n- no. This is like our daughter is 18 months old. You know, this is uh, this it's too yeah. much. And I'm like, "Okay." And so, you know, I went on a walk the next day and I came back and I could truly taste one of my flavors in my mouth. Watermelon coconut is how I I'm like, I can taste what this drink is supposed to taste like. Mm-hmm. And I got home and again I said, "I know that one of my flavors is supposed to be watermelon coconut." Mm-hmm. And he again was like, you're still on this. No. And I'm like, okay. And then later, I still pushed forward and later on either that day or the next day, I couldn't stop thinking like, well, what would I name this beverage? Mm-hmm. And um I always liked the K sounds. I I feel like it is a strong sound, if that makes sense. Um and I said Could you imagine if someone said, "Hey, could you pass me like I don't think that I had thought of Kelia yet, but like could you pass me a can of Kelia?" Mm. And he was like, "You are serious about this." And I'm like, <laughs> "I am." Letter, Letter, I definitely knew I wanted that k- sound. Yeah. Well, 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 true, you know. Certain <laughs> certain letters definitely have a good sound to it. Yeah. Um so I understand. Mm-hmm. And that is honestly when I um found out when I like came across the word Kelia or the name Kelia it means warrior intelligence beauty all of the strength all of these things that i wanted for my consumers to feel mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and to embrace i see and i thought that that could be pretty amazing that could be pretty incredible i didn't want it to be something that was like a play on cannabis or one of the many names cannabis has like mary jane or marijuana or pot or whatever i didn't i wanted it to be something that this is a a juice mm-hmm. that has cannabis in it okay so you told me that you were walking and this thought came up to you and 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 you had a gummy Mm-hmm. and that was your euphoric moment mm-hmm. now my question to you is you have launched a cannabis beverage mm. why not gummy why not any other edible a i thought that gummies i mean there are so many there are so many yeah beverage is a relatively new part of the industry mm-hmm. um i'll be totally honest I didn't know that there when I came up with the idea I thought I was the first person that came up with the idea to make a cannabis beverage. I had mm-hmm. no idea that there was already like many on the market, but I I also wanted a beverage because for a few different reasons. You can make it social. A gummy you just take and mm-hmm. you know the only other way to be social is maybe by smoking a joint or something yeah. but not everyone wants to smoke and i and i you don't realize share it uh, yeah exactly. you know. <laughs> it's exactly. not like a cigarette i mean it's you, you can't keep puff, taking yeah. puffs out of the same uh, joint yeah i was like not everyone wants to smoke mm-hmm. or a lot of people are probably a little bit more health conscious and mm-hmm. smoking can be quite intimidating for people who may be curious about getting into cannabis but they don't want to smoke and it's intimidating because you know a lot of people have that like one experience where they were 
very paranoid. Mm. And then they just stop using cannabis. That would be me. And what's funny, (laughs) I always say to people like, imagine if everyone stopped using alcohol because of like one bad experience. Right. No, no one would drink. Everyone's had a bad experience with mm-hmm. alcohol. Mm-hmm. And so an, another reason with the drink was for those people who are what's called canna curious. Canna curious. Can- what? You're a canna boss? Yeah. There's a canna curious. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I love this curiosity. Okay. Yeah. So with a beverage, you can ingest cannabis at your pace. Mm-hmm. You can, you know, with a gummy... If I gave you five milligrams of a gummy, yeah, it just you goes, mm. just took five milligrams of a gummy. Right. That, and however it affects you, it affects. And it's, you don't know if someone's scared okay. or nervous. Uh-huh. Whereas like with a beverage, sip on it. I'm giving you, let's say five milligrams of a beverage, mm-hmm. but you can chug it if right. you want all five milligrams all at once. Or you can sip on it like you would any other, like a glass of wine. Sarah, to that I had this thought. And this, I can instantly say that somebody is smoking up because of the smell. Yes. But with the drink, I don't think that's one of the problems that, you know, you won't get the no. the marijuana smell around, you know. I think that's also one of the plus with Absolute. <laughs> it feels like my audience is going to be like, are you already a fan, girl? <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, I feel like drinking has so many negative. Um, it just has been crazy how market is flooded with uh, alcohol and it's promotion. Oh, it's five o'clock somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And I was thinking on those grounds. I want you to talk to me about as a user and now as someone who's providing that user experience to the consumer. What is that unique thing that you think you are aiming at when your consumers drink Kelia? For Kelia specifically, it's something that can be, I want people to feel like they are treating themselves well when they're drinking Kelia. There are health benefits in, as I mentioned, each can. Hydration, there are electrolytes. In our, my immunity, there's vitamin C and zinc. And in my metabolism drink, there's prebiotics and fiber. I want you to feel like you're doing something good for yourself, but you can also get a little buzz and, and frankly, with with a drink, it, it really, it's not like this overwhelming sense of like, you just took a hit of a bong, you know, it's not yeah. that. It's, it's, it's like you drank an alcohol seltzer, but with this, it's a non-carbonated, low calorie, low sugar juice that you can feel good about yourself drinking it. And you, maybe if you want to bring it out socially, you can do that. And still feel like you're actually putting something in your body that's good for it and not something that's um, harming you. I mean, there are so many studies that come out now. You know, everyone growing up, it was like, well, a glass of wine a day is good for you. Yeah, I've heard that. It turns out it was only good for you because there are like some antioxidants in red wine. Yeah. It's like if you grab a handful of blueberries, you'll probably get more antioxidants and and that's it. And, you know, your your liver is going to work better and your skin is going to be better and you'll have better sleep and your health, your overall health and mental health, that includes mental health, will be better. Um, Your drink has what kind of strain uh, of cannabis and uh, what does it exactly do? So say, for example, all of them have the same effect or is it different and how different? That's a great question. It's sativa, but they each have different effects because of the minor cannabinoids with either the presence of the minor cannabinoid or in the watermelon coconut situation. I just, it will just be five milligrams of THC. Sativa and indica. So so there is a very quick and very popular thing to remember this. So if it is um, uh, indica, it means in the couch. Yes. It's going to, it's going to, right? Yeah. Yes. So it's going to bring you, calm you down, slow you down, like, you know, ease you and relax you. Yes. Whereas sativa makes your creative juices. It, It cuts out the noise. Yes. In your brain and you're focused on things. Yeah. That's what I've read about. Yes. 
I I prefer sativa over indica um, just because it makes me a bit more alert, actually. Uh, so what is Kalia, basically? So w- when it comes to the effects, the reason why it's going to be different is it's called an entourage effect. It's it What that really means is THC with the minor cannabinoids that they'll, they'll give you a different feeling. For these two flavors over here, for pineapple jalapeno, for most people, not everyone, everyone reacts differently to tea, to everyone reacts differently, differently to everything. So um, for many people, it would give you a nice body high. It would give you a really nice, light, euphoric effect. It would be happy. It would be relaxing, but happy. And you know what I mean? But like, it won't put you to sleep? Um. I think that like all THC products or all cannabis products has the potential of putting someone to sleep, but not not if you, I mean, if you are used to taking it, probably not. Yeah. Five milligrams for a lot of people wouldn't be that much. Right, right. But for some people, that's like an extraordinary amount. So it kind of oh. depends on who you are and, and who you ask. I will say though that for grapefruit ginger, you it probably won't put you to sleep because of the THCV and very little goes a very long way. And how is it uh, different from THC? How is THCV? Different? It's just a different molecule. molecule. Yeah, that will give you um, a more focused and energized effect. So if you want to be creative, write a thesis, PhD thesis. No, I don't have a PhD. <laughs> um, then you're going for the... The THCV drink, yeah. Oh my gosh, Sarah. Okay, this is very enlightening. Before we dive back into the story, let's take a moment to acknowledge our sponsor whose support keeps our stories flowing. Your support helps us continue bringing these incredible tales to light and also raise funds for our local nonprofit, Let's Save the Strays. LifeTex, a studio that prioritizes quality coaching over quantity of clients with a focus on ensuring that every individual's experience enriches their life beyond the studio. LifeTex is committed to guiding clients towards their goals, whether it's weight loss, muscle building, or graceful aging. At LifeTex, the emphasis is not just on lifting weights, but on moving in a way that enhances everyday tasks and activities from gardening to hiking. This holistic approach aims to make clients feel stronger and more capable in their daily lives. What truly sets LifeTex apart is their dedication to welcoming newcomers to the world of fitness. By empowering individuals who have never before considered weight training, LifeTex is fostering communities of strength and vitality. Join us on LifeTex where the journey to a healthier, more vibrant life begins. Welcome to LifeTex where fitness meets transformation in a small personalized training studio dedicated to empowering individuals to live their best lives. You can find them at lifetexfitness.com. Did you know the processes of uh, making this emulsion, distill it? I've been doing my research a little bit. I I did go to the dispensary too. But I was blown away by how the biomass is taken and then that's in the oil soluble way like it's an oil that Mm -hmm. is extracted and then to distillate the thc and the cbd part of the biomass i mean all of this complexity did it intrigue you made you scared hesitant what was your thought when you were like oh my god i have this idea and it just i need to figure this out what did you do i i just we kept on calling people when we found out that people could just kind of make the emulsions because that is a big thing right i would not know how to extract the oil (laughs) from the plant i would not know how to then make the oil into water soluble and um nano emulsify it and and all of that fun stuff um so what I we ended up doing was you know talking to these people and then going to the again the product developer. What my husband and I did to figure out flavor wise what we wanted because we aren't food scientists and I didn't know necessarily how to do this. We <laughs> went to the grocery store and I bought watermelon juice and coconut water and mix them and then I like cut up jalapenos and I love how basic you're going you're going into the roots we really 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 like we tried every because I wanted to know are these flavors even going 
I thought they would go together, but I don't know. And I needed a basis of what should the drink taste like? It is all natural, so I want it to taste all natural. Um, it's a low calorie juice. I love that. Yeah. So for me, I told my husband that, you know, I've never been to a dispensary. I, it'll be my first visit and I want to do my homework. And guess who I meet there at the front desk? They let you in one by one, I believe. You yes. know, it depends on it depends like, how on many it. people yeah. are let in. And uh, another amazing stuff that I found was you have to have cash or debit card to yes. pay for it. No credit cards. Yeah. And it's, I think it's because of the federal it is. regulations. So anyway, coming back to point, there was this guy in his 20s. He was working in that dispensary and he was from Wayland. Oh, really? Wow. And he told me that if you have any question, you know, I'll be available. And he educated me on this. Mm -hmm. My whole point was to not just go into the dispensary and check out stuff or the varieties. Was to understand because I had to interview you. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I bought certain stuff, but I was not educated on the strains. Mm -hmm. So I picked up in the couch, India yeah. and uh, Sativa and uh, Hybrid. Okay. Drink. And uh, th my favorite, I would say, was the one which tasted like Fanta, orange flavored yes. soda. Mm -hmm. But your drink is not carbonated, right? No. Why not make it a seltzer? Well, first and foremost, when I started, this journey. Yeah. It um definitely was there were only seltzers. There were only seltzers out yeah. there. Everything was carbonated. Oh, really? Yeah, everything. Okay. So I was like, that I mean, the, eh, let's do something different. And I thought, you know, you know the drink by B A I. It's B -A -I, it's okay. not oh, yeah, a, I've heard about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like a the coconut a thing low also, calorie yeah. juice. Yeah. That's where I modeled this from, I was see. this idea that um, you can have, you know, something really, really tasty with not that many calories. Actually, a lot of people have come up to me and saying, like, they love it because carbonation can make you feel, like, very full. Bloated? Gassy. Very bloated. <laughs> yeah. Are you taking those very, words here? Yeah, but that's what – it can but, make yeah. you not feel – and some people – there is some disorder, not disorder, there's some genetic something that, and I don't know off the top of my head what it's called, but you just cannot have carbonation. Right. And so like, cheers to them with, you know, I, I came up with this and um, this way you're giving people at least variety because initially a year ago, walking into a dispensary, you were only going to get a carbonated drink. We also used um, they, I want to mention um, minor cannabinoids. Mm -hmm. See, the cannabis plant is so interesting. The, the cannabis plant has something like over 450 properties. 66 of them are categorized as cannabinoids. THC and CBD as major cannabinoids. That's the most. Those and are the what most. What is a cannabinoid? Psychoactive? Different molecule. No, they don't have to be psychoactive. Mm -hmm. um, but they each have been studied to have their own unique effect. I see. So in my immunity drink in pineapple jalapeno, I put in five milligrams of CBG um, because it can actually help fight cancer-causing cells. It actually has antidepressant uh, properties. It This is all studied to perhaps be this. So perhaps it has antidepressant properties and I can't really make claims, mm -hmm. but um, that's why I put it in that drink. It fights cancer-causing cells, fights bacteria, inflammation, skin. Um, it's it's a healing property. Mm -hmm. um, and I found that so interesting. And then in our in my grapefruit ginger in the metabolism drink, I added something called THCV, which okay. is a thought to be a stimulant and appetite suppressant. Um good for metabolism. There are some studies that show it could have promising effects on diabetes and being able to regulate um, insulin. And um, I also thought that that was so interesting just because it's so not what you would – being a stimulant appetite suppressant is the opposite of what most people think of when they think of cannabis. And 
that's what's so incredible about this plant. Yeah, I was about to say, like, you're not getting hungry with the this product. Yeah. That means, <laughs> you know. I have people tell me that um, they replace their cup of coffee with my beverage mm. in the morning. Um, they work out. Or, I'm sorry, they drink it before they work out. Yeah. Oh, I have read about that. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah, I know that uh, it's legal in certain states, but federal on a federal level, it's not. Right. Marijuana and or cannabis has been uh, categorized as um, Schedule One drug, mm -hmm. which means it, it does not have any medicinal properties. Yeah. So now, how did you navigate the legal and uh, regulatory, you know, landscape of it? Because you were in Massachusetts, where it is legal. What were the challenges? What were the unique things you learned about it? We worked really closely with our lawyer on what was legal, what's what wasn't legal. And it becomes very clear mm -hmm. pretty quickly. We are technically not cannabis touching. I purchased the cannabis, but I don't actually touch it. Okay. So uh, we didn't need a license. I see. Which was like a pretty good for us just because um, – that's very expensive. It's a, it can become a lot. And what I found to and still finding to be the most challenging about it being federally illegal is the fact that you can't cross state borders, even from one legal state to another legal state. Yeah, I've so heard that. I can only sell in Massachusetts right now. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where um that's that's a bummer, though. It's a huge. I mean, it's because not it's only even, like what? How many states are have legalized it? Four, five? Fully legalized it. Um, I mean, I know the ca California is California. A lot yeah. of them have it like medical. I see. Okay. So some of them aren't adult use. Mm. Um, there's also, it's just kind of difficult because it's not. It's you can make this beverage, but. You sort of want to be able to sell it in volume, and you're not able to do that. Where is it exactly being made right now? Right now in East Hampton, Mass. Mm -hmm. Nice. It can only be local. How do you see the market evolving with cannabis beverage um, right now and in future and with your product? Um, what do you see the trends right now? Are people like jumping to go to the dispensary or like how do you see the market responding to cannabis beverage? The trends, you know, flower is king. Mm -hmm. um, people who use cannabis like to smoke often. Or I believe that as regulations lift, and I do believe that regulations are going to eventually lift federally, I heard something that they're they want to maybe um as you had mentioned earlier that it's a it's a schedule 1 mm. substance which means that in some states where it's not legal it doesn't matter if you have cannabis or like heroin mm. you would get the same type of you know time Treatment. it's so yeah. which is just yeah. ridiculous it is um and so I do think that thing you know, I heard that they're trying to actually bring it down to a schedule 3 um, which would, I don't, I don't know if it would necessarily mean that it would be a misdemeanor in those places, but it certainly wouldn't be categorized the way that like it used to be categorized in, you know, federally mm -hmm. speaking. So as I had mentioned, flower is king. I do think that, as I said, the can of curious, I think the numbers are growing. And from what I'm seeing and from what I'm reading, um, Gen Z, they're not drinkers. I have read that too. Yeah, they're not drinkers. Like they're trying to replace it with something that can just give them that. They really like more of a chill, not angry, not waking up hungover. They're healthier. They like to go to the gym more than our generation did. It's just so interesting. That's and so I interesting. do think that as that cannabis is going to expand, yeah. I think that um, the beverage portion of the industry um, can only go up. Uh, in doing all of this, um, alcohol is very uh, popular in, in the culture, you know, weekend drinking or just like going out with friends. Uh, but then we also know that there are so many people who suffer from alcoholism, mm -hmm. overdosing. Does that 
prevail in the cannabis industry can you overdose on cannabis no i think i read you would have to consume just an unimaginable amount to have an overdose okay people can sometimes consume too much for themselves um where they may feel that paranoia the anxiety the just you might be hearing things you could even have maybe perhaps you know visual you might see things you know things like that that though is like you really went past your own limit nice. and frankly what normally ends up happening is you fall asleep <laughs> and then you probably wake up really hungry <laughs> so oh, yeah. so that's pretty much like the only there's not side effects yeah oh, sure. there's i see you I don't see. get that anger that mm-hmm. you would get with alcohol or that some people get there mm-hmm. you know maybe people who you know misusing anything is not good for you so no, i think i've asked you so many questions about the product right now if there was uh, one advice you would give to an entrepreneur getting into this industry what would that be <sighs> anything that you faced and you don't want them to face or anything that you realized that was new and unique anything anything i would say probably pick your partner as well not for any reason just i just think that that's important information are important advice. And I think one of the best pieces of advice that I got was from my lawyer and she said be prepared to pivot. Pivot to what? Like if your beverage for some reason if you're coming up with a roadblock because there are going to be it hopefully one day it will open up to be just like any other beverage. Mm. It can be sold in the market. That can, exactly. Mm-hmm. But right you just you might come up with different roadblocks or maybe what you know what I think she was also trying to say is like you might be thinking that your product is going to be one thing mm-hmm. it might be something totally different it might just end up like forming don't get stuck don't not do this because what you want to do you couldn't do i was lucky i ended up being able i didn't have to pivot there are other things you have to pivot on and also to you know familiarize yourself with the plant there's always things to learn and hopefully just uh be kind to your consumers go to a dispensary don't be shy there are literally the nicest people in dispensaries i mean like they work if you work in the cannabis industry yeah. like you you're you're pretty nice um and they want to help you they know the products Right. They know what they're selling. They've tried. Yeah, I asked all of the it. person as well. Yeah, yeah. They, he was very kind and they're, like he was. He was like, you know, this is what you, you because you're trying it first time. I would suggest this. Exactly. Right. Right. I see that. Okay. And so that is something that that uh, doesn't happen with alcohol. <laughs> No, that does not happen with alcohol. <laughs> and nobody told me that IPA. I mean, I love IPAs. I used to love IPAs, I should say. And um it, the the hoppiness, the taste of the beer, but there was nobody to guide you through no. it. And there are millions of IPA varieties now. Yes. And some of them are like Massachusetts, Vermont competing with each other and then yeah. you have other in the west. So, yeah, there was nobody to guide you through this. No, there isn't. And you know so with go go into a dispensary talk to people let them know what you're looking for if you're looking for Great a sleep advice. aid mm. ask tell them that that's what you're looking for if you're not looking to um be in the couch ask them they have products that will be very uplifting or the opposite if you are not looking to you know you just want to chill on the couch and whatever they they know where to guide you start if if you're new start low cuz you can always add on if you're taking a gummy wait the 45 minutes oh yeah it's like Don't, it didn't it didn't happen, it didn't it didn't happen. happen. Uh, nothing's oh, no, working nothing's on happening. me and all of a sudden you're like 10 <laughs> milligrams deep tripping out now I'm joking no, yeah, but it's no, true. It's, it's happened it, can, huh? it ha- totally mm. has happened mm. um Good thing with as I had mentioned, if it's if it says that it's nano emulsified, beverages are pretty much all nano emulsified, but not all gummies are, that will hit you faster. 
Mm-hmm. Um, nano and emulsification. Right? Nano emulsification will definitely it will just you'll digest it easier, so it will get into your bloodstream easier and all of that fun stuff. It's not as scary as people want to think it is. Right. You know, it just isn't. It's it can be a very peaceful, nice experience. That was my question. You've answered all my questions without me asking. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I wanted to. I wanted to know how would you educate? How, how do you plan to educate the crowd, uh, people around you? It, you know, you're saying it uh, right that you know, don't be scared. Don't be scared because there are so many element in one plant. It's yes. it's amazing how mysterious this plant is. It is, and it's been around for thousands of thousands years, of, of course, and celebrated. And then the Hindu culture in India, cannabis drink is called bhang. And it has been a part of uh, Festival of Colors for long, holy. Yeah. So, you know, it has been since ancient time and now yes. it's being, you know, revived in it, a different way, technology-wise. Yeah, it, it's such a shame that, like, you know, there's a book called um, Branding Bud. Um, this guy, David Palaszczuk, and he, he's great. And he explains how it got became, you know, illegal. Basically, after the prohibition, like, and I forget what the sector of the government it was, but it like eventually ended up being the DEA, changing to the DEA. They had nothing to do anymore and they were going to be kicked off. And so they were like, they went with the, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm probably getting maybe a little bit of this wrong, but I think that they teamed up with the um, the timber industry okay, because a lot of paper was being made from hemp. Oh. And the, um, like, what was beginning to be, like, the pharmaceutical industry, because a lot of people were using cannabis and hemp as, you know, if they had a headache or backache or it, it's And hemp medicinal. is a different plant altogether. Um, that's where it… It's uh, a fa- same family? It's, it, they're, like, yeah. Legally, hemp means it has, means the plant has 0.3% THC. Oh. That's the only difference. If it's 0.4% THC, it becomes cannabis. Oh, that is so interesting. It's and, so, and so hemp is legal now. I've been seeing hemp uh, protein powders. Because, I always say this, and I don't want to give the government any ideas, but <laughs> <laughs> I was explaining to someone, they kind of made a mistake. They didn't do their research because technology was going to catch up. In, in 2018, it's called the 2018 Farm Bill. And they basically, that states anything hemp is federally legal. Cannabis is not federally oh, legal. Wow. States decide yes. how to deal with that. Hmm. The technology has, come so, has become so good that you can extract, you know, just go through more hemp. You can still extract all of the THC and THC is THC. Molecularly, it's identical in both hemp and cannabis. So okay. if you have T- you know, THC that's hemp derived, mm-hmm. it's the exact same, same thing. thing. Of course. It's the but same, it's yeah. legal and you can send it across states. Oh, boy. States now, there are a lot of – not a lot, but there are a few states, including Massachusetts. Yeah. That, um, you know, Massachusetts is – I – I how do I say this? <laughs> I see the I love <laughs> that Massachusetts made this legal. I appreciate it. Um but they are making money uh-huh. from the cannabis industry. They are getting their tax dollars. And if uh I started selling a hemp based uh beverage in Massachusetts, they would not make the money. So I don't think you can make hemp based, and it's sort of up in the air whether you can I sell hemp There's derived. A lot here. There, it's a it's, it's a lot to unpack. I know, I yeah. know, but you know, this was a great, great uh, way of approaching this topic, at least for. Um, our local people to yeah. listen to this story and also for all the other countries, people who are beyond, uh, living beyond Massachusetts who don't have it legal in their states mm-hmm. yet. Not Hey, here's advice to them. If you're listening from another state and it is illegal and you would want to try anything with THC in it, then 
order it online. It can come to you. Literally, look it up. There are beverages everywhere that go. are hemp there's derived. A tip. There's gummies. There, you know. Yeah, I get it. Oh, that's a good tip. Okay, yeah. Sarah, this was amazing. Oh, congratulations, Sarah, for Thank launching you. this amazing product. I wish you all the success in future. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Women of Wayland podcast, where we amplify the voices and stories of local women making a difference in our community. If you've been inspired by today's episode, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our podcast. And while you're at it, be sure to visit our show notes. That's where you'll find all the details about Sarah's product, Kelia, and information about our episode sponsor. Together, we can continue to uplift and celebrate the incredible women of Wayland. Stay connected for more empowering stories. And remember, every voice matters. This is your host, Yamini, and you were listening to Women of Wayland, the podcast.